Hi everyone, Manuel from Independent Physics here, and today I would like to talk about Mike McCulloch's quantized inertia theory regarding the effect of dark matter in galaxies. Quantized inertia attempts to phenomenologically explain the success of modifying Newtonian dynamics MOND. We explained MOND in a previous video on how impressive it is that with a simple modification to Newton's law, one can predict the rotation course of galaxies without the need for any physical dark matter, and with a single new constant. The interpolating functions in MOND and quantized inertia are not exactly the same, but behave very similarly. Here, A is the true measured acceleration, for instance, of a star around the galaxy, and A0 is the acceleration scale. In MOND, this acceleration scale is a constant, and in quantized inertia, it is a varying parameter with the radius of the co-moving horizon, that is, the particle horizon or the size of the observable universe. The reason behind this choice is that McCulloch interprets this radius of the universe as a Rindle horizon that appears for any accelerated body, and has a corresponding UNRO radiation. Then he argues that it is this radiation from the quantum vacuum, the one that modifies inertia in galaxy rotation curves. Because at a particular low acceleration scale, the Rindle horizon becomes larger than the radius of the co-moving horizon. For a detailed explanation of this mechanism, I will leave in the description of the video more information on Mike McCulloch's presentations. As far as I know, McCulloch does not derive Mond's expression or its function from his proposed quantum vacuum mechanism. But this is not a problem since no one has been able to derive Mond from some fundamental principle or mechanism. In other words, no one has ever shown where Mond comes from. And apart from the fact that I would expect Planck's constant to appear in the formulation if Mond had an origin in the quantum vacuum, there is another problem that quantized inertia presents. Stacy Marco has measured that the tally fischer law and the acceleration scale constant is the same for nearby galaxies and for very far away galaxies at redshift zeta 2.5. That is, that the acceleration scale hasn't changed during the expansion of the universe. Quantized inertia implies a dependence of the acceleration scale with the size of the universe as a Rindle horizon, and if our cosmic expansion model is correct, Stacy claims that quantized inertia is ruled out. If the acceleration scale depended on the size of the universe as according to quantized inertia, this would make galaxies show greater mass discrepancies starting at a greater acceleration scale, and thus overall faster spins at the early universe. McCulloch claims that this is observed in a few high redshift galaxies. <clears throat> One of the advantages of this formula, as I said, is that you can, if you change the cosmic scale, it predicts a different uh, variation in inertial mass. It predicts an enhanced effect. So the great way to do this is to look at the distant past when the universe was uh, informationally smaller. It's already used this, and therefore the inertial mass should be more affected. Um, and there was a paper by Genzel et al. in 2017 where he looked at this and he plotted the observed accelerations against the predicted ones. And the redshift of these different galaxies is shown by, the, by these numbers. And you can see that as the redshift increases, as we look further into the past, the acceleration of these systems increases. And I think that this disagreement between Mike Koch and Mike Kulok should be easy to settle down by the evidence in the next years, with better measurements of high redshift galaxy rotation curves. In contrast, I have been supporting in this channel a different attempt to phenomenologically explain MOND. You can think about my version as the Magian approach and McCulloch's as the quantum vacuum and radiation and Rindle horizons approach. In my Magian MOND, I hypothesize that A0 is not constant or the speed of light squared divided by the size of the universe as in quantized inertia but it is the gravitational field intensity of the observable universe. This, as in the case of quantized inertia relationship, also matches in orders of magnitude the acceleration scale constant in MOND. And while quantized inertia directly predicts a varying acceleration scale along the universe expansion, my Magian version does not, if the gravitational field intensity of the observable universe hasn't changed along the cosmic expansion. And the question is, has it? Well, there are many uncertainties at play here. The radius of the universe depends on the Hubble tension. And the mass of the universe should really be the energy density of the universe, since all forms of energy gravitate. The universe at large is a relativistic system, you cannot do cosmology with Newton, and perhaps a relativistic contribution to the mass of the universe is required here. 
Moreover, there could be missing massing clusters even if Mon solves the need for dark matter in galaxies. I will try to work this out in a future paper. But don't get me wrong, the intention behind Quantize Inertia is good, and even Mordechai Milgram, the original author of Mond, favors the idea that Mond comes from the quantum vacuum modifying inertia. In this video I present why I disagree with both McCulloch and Milgram in this idea of Mond being related to the quantum vacuum. But I thank McCulloch for putting all his effort in trying to explain Mond, a challenge that I have also accepted but with a Magian interpretation. Thank you very much and see you next time here in Independent Physics.